Hey YouTube, today we're gonna to talk about Google and why they feel that they and OpenAI do not have a moat compared to the open source community. Now, a lot of people have been talking about this leaked document from Google, but I don't think there's been enough discussion about the technical why of why Google is afraid. Namely, we're gonna talk about scalability from quantization and GGML and how those work. Then we're gonna talk about LoRa and how that affects fine tuning. And then we're going to talk about multimodal models and the other breakthroughs that the open source community has made. So let's get started. Now, I'm sure you all have seen this article a dozen times. I am not going to rehash the article. Rather, we're going to talk about the bullet points and what are the technical implications of them. So the first thing that Google talks about is the scalability problem, right? These large language models require a lot of resources. And that's because when we're dealing with machine learning problems, we're typically training them and using them it's 16 bit and 32 bit floating point. And so that requires GPU compute, requires a lot of memory when we're talking about hundreds of billions of parameters. And it just, it makes it very limited the, no, the amount of hardware that you can run them on. But the open source community already has access to things like 8-bit quantization, where zero point is probably the most common, and now even four bit, three bit, and two bit quantization which what that means is we're taking these floating points and we're reducing them to integers. So let's let's talk about that for a moment and see how it works. So remember, when we're dealing with machine learning, what we're dealing with is specifically 16-bit and 32-bit floating point values, specifically between the weights on our network here. And the weights are what are connecting the neurons. So what we can do is, for example, if we have a 16-bit floating point vector, we can apply 8-bit quantization as described by Tim Detimers in his paper LLM 8-bit or int 8. So there are two common methods that we can apply, zero point or abs max. And in the case of abs max, you constrain the values between negative 127 and 127, and you find the maximum value of that vector, which in this case is 6.1. You divide 127 by that value and you get a scaling factor. You multiply by that scaling factor and then you just round to the nearest integer. So there are some concerns with this method, specifically which you have are called outlier features. And that's where we believe that the emergent properties of the network come from. So what are emergent properties in this case? Well, in the case of the transformer model, it learns how to deal with uh, looking at the context a little bit better, right? And this emergent property happens a lot more dynamically the larger the network is. And this was a problem, but now we have a way of dealing with it, specifically by leaving the outlier features as 16-bit floating point values. So you kind of end up with this mixed model of quantized and unquantized values. So let's get back to the paper. This in conjunction with GGML, which is an optimization that allows us to run these models on CPU, means that the brevity of hardware that these models can run on is quite vast, including just our own consumer hardware. So for example, with the 7 billion and 13 billion parameter model on my 7950X, I've seen 15, 20, 12 to 15 tokens easily per second. And the 30 billion and 60 billion parameter model is a different story, but often I don't find myself needing to go beyond the 13 billion or 30 billion parameter model. And this kind of goes into the next point where Google talks about scalable personal AI. And what they're really talking about is something called LoRa, which is low rank adaptation. So what happens here is you have your base pre-trained model and those weights remain untrained and you attach two lower rank uh, decomposed matrices, those are gonna be what you train. And there's two advantages here. They're smaller, so they don't require the same amount of resources to train, and B, you're not having to retrain the entire network. So again, lower resources required. And so this means that on even consumer hardware, we can train these models on our personal data sets. So this leads into the next point where large language models aren't more capable in the long run, they're hard to train from scratch, and data quality scales better than data size. So when we were talking about moving from GPT-4 to GPT-5, one of the big talking points was that the data quality really did outweigh the volume of the data. 
And while you need a lot of data to train these things, the tighter controlled your data is, the better behaved your large language model is. And with LoRa and quantization and the access that the open source community has to train their own large language models with really finely controlled data, we get better models. And this gets to be a bigger problem for them when we look at the results for things like Koala. More 50% of the time, people either preferred Koala, Koala or had no preference whatsoever when compared to ChatGPT. And the open source community was also able to take Llama and through the parameter efficient fine tuning technique, we're able to make it a multimodal model in just an hour. And what multimodal means here is that it's capable of more than just text completion. So it can do image processing, it can do uh, mathematics, time with other systems. And this means that the open source community doesn't need OpenAI or BARD to be able to create and generate their own powerful models. And this gets to be an even bigger problem when we realize that this doesn't limit us to just two major competitors or three if you really consider Anthropic. You can choose your own model for your own use case. This leads to the ultimate point that there is no controlling proprietary information in this space. With the leaking of Llama, what we already understand about GPT's architecture, and the trading that happens between Google and OpenAI and all these other tech giants, there's just no fighting the open source community here. And so the future of large language models, I believe, lies in the open source community, not in these large tech giants. So if this was helpful, please like and subscribe, and see you next time.